I love to move without structure, goals, or expectations. I love to skip down the street and jump into puddles. I'm not only doing it because it's fun, but I'm also doing it because it helps me to stay curious, courageous, and resilient. It allows me to think around the edges and to fully feel and express my emotions. Being physically playful helps to maintain a playful state of mind, and that is a key to being creative, courageous, and resilient. Being playful helps me to be undaunted, not intimidated by difficulties or disappointed by discouragement. It allows me to stay audacious and to take risks. You might ask yourself, how's playfulness connected to being creative and resilient? And I will answer that for you today. But firstly, I want to invite you to think back to a time when you were little and the world was filled with wonder and excitement. Life was about enjoying the little things, going on adventures, being present with each other. You might have built a tree house or run through the fields bare field. You might have made up wondrous stories in your mind. Life was full of enchantment and surprises. We enjoyed the unpredictability, the messiness, the risk-taking. We embraced the exuberance of our bodies. As children, we instinctively played with movement, sound, and gestures to make sense of the world around us. We are all born creative, curious, and hungry to explore the world. Yet when is the last time you jumped into a puddle, danced under the moonlight, or pretended to rule the world? Most of us have forgotten that wildness within us. Those creative and instinctual parts have been put to the side as we acquired kids, jobs, mortgages. Who hasn't heard, stop playing around, there's work to do, be serious. There is a common perception that playfulness is only for children, or worse, for the lazy or the idle. But far from being a useless activity, playfulness and thus imagination and creativity is a world of understanding both our external reality and our internal subjective world. Often our most advanced mental functions like abstract conceptual thought or problem-solving skills are not able to resolve problems. Instead, the earliest glimmers of understanding emerges images, metaphors, and symbols. If we take our imagination seriously and give it concrete expression, we set into motion a process of understanding and integrating even the most difficult experiences. Creativity is our ability to come up with and act upon novel ideas and solutions. And the reality is, in a forever changing world like ours, we desperately need to be open to unconventional solutions. Life's faster than ever. We are under pressure. There will be forever hiccups, setbacks, difficulties. We need to find ways to stay open and resilient. Times of change and flux can be very vulnerable experiences. And it doesn't matter whether it's a new job, those unpredictable people around us, a pandemic, or if we're just asking ourselves, what's next? So how can we keep these abilities open? Because the fact is, if we keep doing the same things over and over again, if we maintain the same patterns, if we are, rely on set routines, we will only and always choose the most familiar answer, and that's usually the least interesting one. We need to be able to deepen our thinking so that we can see all the contradictory multiple possibilities to grab the most innovative, innovative solution we can find. So how can we step into the unknown and deal with whatever life has to offer? <laughs> or should I say whatever life throws at us? <laughs> Play might just be the answer. Experiments conducted at the MIT indicate that play is at the very core of creativity and innovation. 
Yet studies in pediatric medicine show that free playtime for children has reduced by over 70% in the last 20 years. A lack of free play in early childhood, although, <clears throat> allows us to indicate a susceptibility to criminal activities and addiction. So children who are deprived of play, whether due to poverty, absent parents, or an overstructured childhood, are more likely, three times more likely, to be arrested for a crime at the age of 23 than compared to children who actually had a playful upbringing or attended a play-orientated preschool. It has also led to the common phenomena that since we kind of reduced playtime in childhood and education, that really innovative companies are training or teaching their employees to play again in order to awaken that dormant creativity. So why do research stress so much the importance of play for the early development of the brains on children? Children doing play, they learn to calculate possibilities. They make assumptions about their physical surroundings. They adjust their perception according to the input of others. They develop chronological awareness. Play is linked to language development, self-control, social skills, and empathy. Play also allows children to integrate and work through very difficult experiences such as natural disasters, trauma, grief, loss, or violence. And for adults, play is an evolutionary process. It is a profound biological process and it affects our outlook on life as adults. So playfulness for adults is energizing and it releases our brain from the linear sensible thinking so we can actually make all those unconventional connections. An atmosphere of playfulness allows us to communicate and express our feelings, to connect to each other in a direct and honest way. We get to know ourselves and become present in the here and now. Playfulness releases us from perfectionism because we're allowed to tinker, to experiment and to make mistakes. Playfulness helps us to recover quickly from stress, remain curious in our work, stay open, and have more fun in life. During play, we can lose ourselves and find ourselves at the same time. Without play, adults might end up getting burned out or tired from the constant hustle and bustle. Without play, adults might become unhappy without really understanding why. So very often, if we are able to reawaken those playful and creative instincts, we're also unlocking a big positive change in an adult's life. Let me just specify the difference between play and games for the one in the audience who go like, I play cards, <laughs> I should be fine. There is a difference between games and play. So games have a priori rules, and those rules need to be followed during the game to make the game enjoyable. You cannot just match cricket with football. Play, on the other hand, has no rules. It affords us to be present in the here and now. We need to improvise and go with the flow. So the brain is forced to come up with it ad hoc in the moment solution. And that's the creativity in it. During play, we aim to be creative. And that's how we learn. Creativity, although, is like a muscle. If you're not going to use it, you will lose it. You cannot sit back on your couch and wait for creativity to strike you like lightning. You need to build it into your daily life like a practice. And that process is necessarily different for each one of you because creativity, like our DNA, is unique to the individual. There are, although, a couple of things you can do to boost that playfulness. And I want to share some things for you today to integrate in your life. Think back when you were little. What did you enjoy doing as a child? What were those activities where you're just in the moment and you did not consider the outcome? You want to take those memories and translate them into sensations now. So find an activity and make it matching to your current circumstances. If that's a little bit too abstract, practice ambidexterity. Ambidexterity will actually enhance your ability to use both sides of your brain to come up with a solution. If you sit in front of your computer and feel a little bit blur, get up, move in a non-linear, abstract way 
that connects to your feelings for about 30 seconds to a minute. <sighs> my office got actually used to my created outburst, I promise. If you feel stuck with a problem, get up. Go for a walk. Don't think about it. Focus on your surroundings. Feel the wind on your skin. <sighs> Smell the air. Watch the clouds go by. Research has shown that innovative thinking increases by 58% just after a 10-minute leisurely stroll. Give yourself time in the day to do something without purpose. Daydream. Stare out of the window. Effective people actually do stare out of windows. The interesting thing is that we're not staring out of the window to find out what's going on outside but it is paradoxically a discovery of the contents of our own mind. Engage in some form of free movement during the day that has no structure or expected outcome. If you are exercising to burn fat, you're actually not playing. Free imaginative play might include fantasies like being someone else or something else. Or it might just be that you skip down the road and jump into a puddle. Free imaginative play is crucial. It makes us better adjusted, smarter, and less stressed. So to make, take time to play and to make sure you play, schedule time in your day through it. Live a creative life and take time to play.